Okay, so we are now we're recording. We're doing 4.3 today. So we are learning. Um, we're just doing a lot more 3.2. Nothing today is super new. I'm going to teach you a trick, but nothing I'm doing today is brand new. So a lot of it's just kind of reviewing the same skills. And the first four questions are a huge review of everything we've done. It's just a slightly different form. So hopefully if you've been lost or if you're like barely kind of grasping it, maybe I can like get us over the edge today. So number one says evaluate the six functions of theta. So I gave you a picture. I told you theta is that big angle and it ends at this point, negative three, negative four. Remember last class I told you about bow tie angles or reference angles? We're gonna draw a bow tie angle here. So I always draw my bow tie angle to the X axis and I make it a right angle on the X axis. And then my theta, the angle that I care about is always closest to the origin. So it's always this angle right in here. That reference angle is the same as if I went 180 plus that little bow tie. So we're allowed to only look at that theta. We don't have to worry about all the 180 before it. The reason I gave you the coordinate point, the reason that's helpful is because this is my X, this is my Y. My X is my horizontal distance. So I'm gonna label the X axis or my horizontal length negative three. And then my Y tells me how we go up and down. That's my vertical distance. So I'm gonna label my vertical distance as negative four. We are not used to, like before today, we would not have ever labeled a triangle sides negative. But since we're on the circle, if we're thinking about the point negative three, negative four, we can form a triangle from that. We can also find the hypotenuse from here. And I'm gonna tell you that the hypotenuse is always, always, always positive. So even though the X's and the Y's um, and the other legs can be positive and negative, the hypotenuse will always be positive. And we've done this before, right? Let's find it. So I'm gonna find the hypotenuse for this. I'll do negative three squared plus negative four squared equals X squared or C squared. Um, remember negatives always squared become positive. So I've got 16 plus nine equals C squared. Together those become 25 and square root of 25 is just five. Nice. Once I find my missing third side, we need to label all of our sides opposite adjacent hypotenuse. What's my opposite side here? Negative four, good. What's my adjacent side? Good, and what's my hypotenuse? Five, good. And from there, we've been doing a lot of sine, cosine, tangent, et cetera, so you can label from there. I'll walk through this one and then I'll kind of let you fill in the other ones. So remember, we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If you know that, don't feel like you have to write it. Um, so that means my, my ratio is negative four over five. My cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means my ratio is negative three over five. And my tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is negative four over negative three. And we know a negative divided by a negative is the same thing as a positive. So I'm gonna make that positive four over three. Everybody hanging with me so far? All the other ones are the reverse. Again, if you know this, you don't have to write H over O, but I'm just reminding you. So I'm for this cosecant, I'm doing the reciprocal of sine. I'm doing five over negative four. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm doing five over negative three. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent A over H, which is three over four. Okay. All right, I'm doing this to prove a point. So which trig functions here are positive? Which of which are the only two that are positive? Good, tan and cotan, very good. So tan and cotan are the only ones that are positive. You can just watch me do this. You don't have to highlight your paper. I'm just trying to make a point. So that means sine is negative, cosine is negative, cosecant is negative, and secant is negative. Okay. Same thing for the next one. You ready to do that? We've got four of kind of these almost exact same problems. We're just really getting that muscle memory down. I got to draw my, um, my reference triangle, my little bow tie angle from here. So I'm gonna draw this. Again, it always, always, always goes to the X axis. And my theta is always the closest angle to the origin. Where's my three gonna go? Which side gets to be three?
Good for the horizontal one. So then which side's my negative two? Vertical one, thanks Bella. And then we don't know my hypotenuse. Hint, on problems like this, you will not know the hypotenuse because in X and Y, that's never a slant distance. It's always over left and right or up and down. So same idea, let's find our hypotenuse. Three squared plus negative two squared equals C squared. Nine plus four equals C squared. 13 equals C squared. Square root 13 equals C. I know I kind of rushed through that, but you guys are good at the Pythagorean theorem, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. <clears throat> All right, which side's my opposite? Which side's my adjacent? Good, what's my hypotenuse? Root 13, very good. All right, once you have those labeled, find all of your trig functions. Check my answers on the board when you're done. And again, just like the quiz, you can rationalize if you want, and I'm going to show both answers, but if you don't want to rationalize, that's okay too. I do, regardless, like to write the unrationalized version, so it's easy to do my reciprocal momentarily. Okay. Once you finish, check your answers. Okay, so from here, which one is positive? Which trig functions are positive in this one? cosecant or cosine and secant, right? Cos and sec. So the other ones are all negative. So again, I'm just proving my little point. You can just ignore me or you can just kind of observe and I'll make it make sense momentarily. But my positive one in this is cosine, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you in one second. Mm -hmm. I'm leading us there. All right, the next part is a very similar type of problem. It just doesn't have the picture drawn for us. So we're gonna draw our picture with us. It says point P is on the terminal side of theta in standard position. Find the values of the six functions of theta. So I'm gonna do the first one. I'm gonna find this point right here and I'm gonna put it on a coordinate plane. So I'm gonna draw a little X, Y axis down here. What quadrant is two negative two gonna be in? Four, very good. It's gonna be in the fourth quadrant. That's that point like right here, two, negative two. So I'm gonna draw my right triangle from there. I'm gonna put my theta, I'm gonna put my X on the horizontal, my Y on the vertical. I'm gonna find my hypotenuse. Once I've done that, I'm gonna find all my trig functions. So I'm gonna be quiet and you guys just watch or um, do it at your pace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you found your C, that's square root of eight, and the square root of eight is the same thing as two root two. So I do want it, I do want that one simplified into two root two. When you do your trig functions, you can choose to keep simplifying. You can choose not to, you can choose to rationalize. You can choose not to. I am because it's gonna look so much nicer when it's simplified and rationalized, but I'll show you kind of both answers. Don't forget to identify your opposite, your hypotenuse and your adjacent. 
and I'm going to zoom in so I can nicely write my trig functions, but then I'll zoom back out so you can see everything. <laughs> I am not going to be super picky about it right now, but like when we use our unit circles, I definitely don't. So I'm trying to show you the best way of doing it, but also if you didn't think to do that, what your answer would be as well. You don't have to. Some of you will find that you just like start simplifying because like it looks nicer to you. So feel free to do that. But the biggest skill right now is not your algebra simplifying and rationalizing, it's your trig functions. Can you do sine? Can you do cosine? Now it's really coming down out there. It's like we're in a snow globe. Is it sticking? Yeah. Is it cold outside? We're not leaving. <laughs> if you had to be stuck at school, which class would you rather be stuck in? Resource. Resource. Dismissal. Oh, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions on what we've done so far? What's my positive one here? Secant and cosine. Everything else is negative. All right, we've got one more like this, and I'm going to kind of prove to you why I've been highlighting the negatives and positives. The last one, I'm going to actually just put on that same graph that I already have. I'm going to put the point negative one, four. What quadrant will that one be in? Two. Very good. I'm going to go draw negative one, four. It does not have to be super exact. I'm not going to be like, oh, that's not negative one, four. I just want a triangle in the second quadrant. That's truly all I care about. Make my right angle go down to the X axis, put my theta by the origin, put negative one as my X, put four as my Y. Find my hypotenuse. Just going to do it above that. Four squared plus negative one squared equals c squared. 16 plus one equals c squared. 17 equals c squared. Root 17 equals c. Once you find your hypotenuse, find all your trig functions. Oh, sorry, first you gotta label opposite your face of hypotenuse, then find all your trig functions. When you're done, check your work. Does it doesn't matter like, the way you draw the triangle on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Like in what quadrant it is? Yeah, like how did like I get that you you drew it off the point negative one four, but I'm yeah. not sure I it's that. So once you find the point negative one four, once you decide which quadrant that's in, you start your right triangle by going down to the x-axis. So we always draw to the x-axis. Um, what I think what you drew like this, is this like what you drew right here? That's what a lot of people want to draw. I want your angle to not be like 
I want your angle to be at the axis. And if my angle is at the axis in this triangle, that's the right angle and that's not special or important. Oh. So I want the right angle to be on the X axis over here. And then the angle we care about to be inside right there. Mm -hmm. All right, um, what is my positive function in this one? Sin, sine and cosecant. So everything else is negative. Okay, part of the reason we did that is because it's good practice. Those are skills that we have been using, been practicing, been talking about. So I wanted to kind of make sure that we knew how to do it. Those are also very similar to the ones that we did before, but the directions look a little different. So we often kind of panic and you're like, oh, I don't know how to do this. And I, my argument is, yeah, you do. So I wanted to kind of show you, I can start with different things and you can still get to the same place. Okay, we're gonna skip number two for right now. And we're gonna come down to number three because that's gonna to explain to us why we've been doing this. It says, tell the sign of sine, cosine and tangent of an angle in the given interval. So I'm thinking about the interval. You can draw a little coordinate plane right here. These are all in terms of radians. Which quadrant would be where angles between pi over two and pi r? Which quadrant would have all the angles between pi over two and pi? My first question might be, where is pi over two at? It's at 90, right? Positive x or positive y. Where is pi at? Which angle, which degree is pi at? 180. So we're looking between 90 and 180, which is the which quadrant? Two. We're looking at this quadrant right here. If you forgot, you can have your, your unit circle off. That's why it's there. But I start with zero degrees at my positive x. I go up to 90 or pi over two. Then I come down and we're used to that being 180, but we also really need to get in the hang of that being pi. And we can actually stop there because that's quadrant two. That's what I care about. Quadrant two, we want to know whether the sine, cosine, or tangent is positive or negative. Which example did we just do that was in quadrant two? Was it the first, second, third, or fourth example we just did? It was the most recent one, right? In the last one, this was a quadrant two one. What is, what is sine? Is that positive or negative? Positive, what about cosine? What about tangent? Good. So in every angle in the second quadrant, sine will be positive, cos will be negative, and tan will be negative. If you have your unit circle out, let's look at it, right? I just told you, ooh. I just told you sine is positive, that's your y value. Are all the y's in our second quadrant positive? Yeah, are all the x's, are all my cosine negative? In the second quadrant, are all my cosines in the second quadrant negative? Yeah, we know tangent is the same thing as y divided by x. So if my y, if my sines are all positive, my, my cosines, my x's are all negative, does a positive divided by a negative give me a negative? Cool, okay. Let's see if we can do that for one more quadrant. This one says the quadrant are all the angles between pi and three pi over two. Which quadrant is that gonna be in? The third quadrant, good. Because if I went another pi over two, I'd be at three pi over two or 270. So now I'm thinking about the third quadrant. And again, you can either use your unit circle or you can use the examples we just did. Which example did, of the four that we just did, which of those was in the third quadrant? I think it was the first one, right? First one, this is the third quadrant. What is sine, positive or negative? What about cosine? What about tangent? Good, okay. So we're gonna write, write that down here. Sine is negative, cos is negative, and tan is positive. Well, if tan is y, which is negative, or cosine, divided by, sorry, y, which is sine, which is negative, divided by x, which is cosine, which is negative, does a negative divided by a negative give you a positive? Yeah. So that's how that works. Now we've got a cute little cheat sheet for this. So go ahead and pull your unit circle out. And we're gonna write some letters around my figure. Have you heard any of your other pre-cal friends talk about all students take calculus yet? 
No. Okay. I feel like some years I start talking about it and the kids are like, oh, that's what everybody's talking about. So I don't know what our, where other people are in their lessons, but we're here now. So we're going to talk about it. I want you to write a big A outside the first quadrant. I want you to write a big S outside the second quadrant. I want you to write a big T outside the third. And I want you to write a big C outside the fourth. The little mnemonic we use to remember that is all students take calculus. This means that in the first quadrant, all of my trig functions are positive. We didn't even do any examples from quadrant one because it's boring. They're all gonna be positive. All my signs, all my Y's are positive. All my X's, all my cosines are positive. A positive number divided by a positive number is still positive, okay? Boring, let's move on. The interesting one is where we get to the second quadrant where you just told me a minute ago, sine was the only one that was positive. So sine is the only one that's positive. That's what that big S means. If you look at it, signs are Y, Y is positive, but cosine is negative. So all my cosines are negative. All my X's are negative, that's true. And if we did a positive divided by a negative number, we'd still get negative. So sine is the only positive trig function in that shape, in that quadrant. Similarly, the bottom one, the T stands for tangent, tan. My X's and my Y's, my sines and my cosines are both negative, I physically see that. But if you do a negative divided by a negative, tan is gonna be positive. That's the only trig function that's positive in that quadrant. And then last, C is for cosine. My X's are the only things that are positive and we know X is cosine. The Y's are negative. That means that they're, the signs are all negative and negative and positive divided together give me a negative, okay? So that being said, I can just look at an angle and know what quadrant it's in and know whether the sine or the cosine or the tangent is positive or negative. So it's kind of a hint that we're gonna use a little bit more. Again, this is me giving you some more puzzle pieces, giving you more tools. You don't really know what to do with them yet, but we're gonna use them momentarily, okay? Before we can use them, I gotta give you another tool. Go back to your note sheet. That is like my toolbox is full. <laughs> the A stands for all. A-L-L. -L. All of them are positive in that one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I told you to skip number two. We're going to do number two now. This is talking about coterminal angles. I don't think I've talked about coterminal angles at all, have I yet? Um, let's think about it this way. You drive to school every day, right? You have a route that you like take almost every day, right? Is there another way you could go to school though? Often that's the slower route, right? And you're like, well, I could go this way, but it's slower or there's more traffic. But like if there was a wreck on your normal route, you take the other route, right? Your house and school are still in the same place, but you can go to it from here or you can go to it from here or you can go from like the middle, right? There's several routes you can get from one place to the same place, but they are different. That's what these angles are. These are the exact same angles but the way we get to them could be different. So I'm gonna draw, I'm just gonna draw for the first one because I think a visual is helpful. I'm gonna draw 100. When we do our angles, remember one is always on the positive X axis. And where will my other side of the angle be? What quadrant? To get to 100, what quadrant will I be in? Two. 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 Good, so it's a little bit past 90, but not a lot past 90. So this is my 100 degrees. We've done that, that doesn't seem too crazy, right? So we went like the normal way that I taught you how to do angles. We start on the positive X axis, we come up and around. We could go the opposite direction though. How many degrees would I have to travel if I went down and around? Why'd you get 260? Good, the only thing I'm gonna tell you is I want this to be negative 260 because in order to show that I went down instead of up, in order to show that I went opposite direction of what we normally go to, I'm gonna do negative. And what you guys just tell, told me is perfect. We're doing 100 and we're doing minus 360 to get negative 260. We also, and this is not like a super useful one, but we do do this and sometimes you have a really, really big angle. We could also do, that's too light, where I go all the way around once. How many degrees is that? And then go to my angle. What would my angle be here? 460. 
And what we did is we went all the way around. We did 360 plus that 100. So the other way we get our angle is we take the angle given to us 100 and then we add 360 to it. Every single time I ask for two coterminal angles, you're gonna add 360, you're gonna minus 360. That's all it is. We're gonna add 360, we're gonna minus 360. So I'm gonna come up here next to coterminal, coterminal and I'm gonna write plus minus 360. That seems to make sense, right? We're okay with that. All right, let's do letter B. Oh shoot, now I'm in radians. Well, that's okay. What is the same thing as adding 360 in radians? Two pi. I'm gonna add or subtract two pi if I'm talking about radians. Yes, you can always convert, but if I gave it to you in radians, I probably want it back in radians. So that just means you're converting twice, which you are welcome to do. You have the skills for that. It's just not the most effective way. So what I would encourage us to do instead is we're gonna take two pi over seven and we're going to add three, add two pi and we're gonna minus two pi. All right, the trig step is just adding or subtracting two pi because we're either going the opposite way or we're going around more than once. But the algebra is like the tough part here. I need to make two pi into a fraction that will add to two pi over seven. What is two pi in terms of pi over sevens? Two pi is the same thing as what pi over seven? 14 pi over seven. So we know 14 divided by seven is the same thing as two. So I'm gonna make this improper fraction. So now I can do that. I can do two pi plus 14, that's 16 pi. And then the denominator stay the same, 16 pi over seven. That's the exact same thing for what I'm gonna minus. I'm gonna minus 14 pi over seven, which is gonna be negative 12 pi over seven. If we could simplify, awesome, but we can't, not with this problem. So we're just not gonna worry about it. Anybody questions yet? Okay, next problem is very, very similar. I just gave you a negative angle to start with, but we're still gonna add 360 and minus 360. So go ahead and do that with this angle. Is it negative five times I do that math right? Okay. How are we doing? Brain break, mm, I don't know if we have time for brain break. Yeah, like at least two minutes. We don't got started late. Yeah. I appreciate Thank you so much. <laughs> This next one, all we're doing is deciding the sign of these. So that means I just want a positive or a negative sign. We're going to use the coterminal thing I just taught you and the all students take calculus idea of our unit circle. So this is us combining these two concepts. So I really want to get this while our brain's still fresh on it. Okay. I know the radians is the harder ones, but I want to push us with this first. Okay. Cosine of nine pi over, or sorry, eight pi over nine. Which quadrant is that going to be in? What quadrant is eight pi over nine gonna be in? Is that more than one whole pi or is it less than one whole pi? Can mean quadrant two? If you have a hard time with that, one whole pi is at 180. It's not quite one whole, right? Eight over nine is not quite one whole. So it's gonna be somewhere in quadrant two. Is everybody okay with that? I'm gonna be quite honest, in general, as a group, your guys' fractions just suck. So the reason this is hard is not because of trig, it's because our fractions suck. Would you agree? And that's okay, we'll work on our fractions, but I'm gonna argue that what I'm teaching you isn't the hard part, it's the putting it with the fractions, that's the hard part. Okay, so fractions do suck. And one day you won't have to do that many fractions, but right now we're gonna push through. So we're in quadrant two, and cosine is which variable, X or Y? 
X, good. And in my quadrant two, is cosine positive or negative? Negative. What's the only thing positive in quadrant two? Sine, awesome. That's all I wanna do. I actually didn't even need to tell us to remember that cosine was X because that really doesn't matter, but it was just a nice little reminder. The next one, cosecant of negative pi over seven. Okay, in order to figure out the quadrant, this time I'm not going up pi over seven, I'm going down pi over seven. Is that more than a half or is it less than a half? Less, right? So it's gonna be somewhere in the fourth quadrant. The cool thing about this fraction work is I don't need it to be too exact, we're just kind of comparing. I'm just saying, how far into this am I going? I'm not going any more than a half, so I'm gonna stay in quadrant four. And cosecant, which function does that go with? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine, so my sine in the fourth quadrant is what? Negative. Because we know, all students say calculus, the only thing positive in the fourth quadrant is cosine. If you struggle remembering that, I'd maybe even draw a little picture off to the side with your A, S, T, C. So when you check, when I'm like, okay, I'm in quadrant four. Okay, the only thing in quadrant four that's positive is cosine. So any other trig function is negative. All right, letter C, the last um, um, fraction we have, the last radian we have is 25 over eight, 25 pi over eight. That's more than one time around, right? How many times around have I gone? I've gone three, right? So 25 divided by eight is three point something, 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 right? Technically, I don't know what the decimal is, but I know it's gonna be three and one eighth. So when I go around, I'm not going around the circle three times, I'm going a pi three times. So one pi is at 180, two pi is at 360, three pi is at 180. I'm only going one eighth more. So which quadrant am I gonna end in? Three, very good. So I went three times and a little bit more around. So I'm in quadrant three. And cotangent goes with which trig function? Tan and tan is positive or negative in quadrant three? <coughs> positive. Yes, you may. Okay, how are we doing with that so far? Okay. All right, let's go with the degrees. The degrees will go a little faster. You guys are a little bit more comfortable with that. Okay, so sine of 152, what quadrant is 152 in? Quadrant two, is sine positive or negative in quadrant two? Positive, fun. All right, tan of negative 200. I am gonna draw a little picture here to see where negative 200 is. I have to go down 200 degrees, where do I stop? second quadrant. I have to go a little bit farther than 180, right? A little bit farther than 180, so I'm in quadrant two. And what is tan in quadrant two? Negative. All right, and then I've got secant of 500. Cool, that's nowhere on my picture, right? Hint, if you have a number bigger than 360, I just start minusing 360 as many times as I need to in order to get a number inside my circle. So minus 360, I get 140. And what quadrant is 140 in? Second. Wow, we just spent a lot of quality time in the second quadrant, didn't we? Secant goes with which trig function? Cos. And cos is positive or negative in quadrant two? Negative. Okay, what I wanna get into is number five. And this is where we're kind of using all of these ideas, using our coterminal angles, using our all students take calculus, using our unit circles to identify these. I'm gonna go through as many as I can, but I also want you to try some. Do you want a minute to try some on yourself and then I'll kind of talk through them? Or do you want me to start you off and then give you a minute to work on it and then come back? Let me, let me just release you for a second. Okay. You get released, you work on this. I'll come back in like four minutes. I'll talk through as many as I need to. If you need to use this time to brain break, you can do that too. But I'll be talking about all of number five when we talk in five minutes. Thank you. 
Oh, it's supposed to snow all day. I don't know it at all. It was supposed to snow. Um, this app just says snowy conditions. Let me go look at my other app. Let's get like 40 next week. Yeah. 40 inches of snow. It says moderate one to one point seven inches. I don't know if that's what it's at right now or if that's what it's gonna be. It is supposed to be warmer next week, but it's also supposed to rain. Is that something I'm supposed to know? Is that an inside joke? Is that an inside joke? Or is it four dice? Okay. It's inside enough. So two more minutes. I really don't. No big plans. I wish I had something exciting to do. Maybe. Well, I don't pay for cable, oh, okay. so <laughs> no, it's like it's a ripoff. Cable is so much money. And you don't even watch. For like, it. Yeah, I you don't even cable. watch it, and it's like all the basic. Yeah. See, I, I don't pay for YouTube TV. How much a month is that? It's cheaper than cable. Well, yeah, but but when you start doing like, I pay for Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus, and like just over time. And whoever did that case stop? It's on Drew, my. I literally saw your name up there. It's on my Zoom that's being recorded. <laughs> that's said. That's true. Uh, that's not said. I don't know how you have the authority to kick me off my room Zoom. What's this? But... What's this uh, you got hacked by somebody. I know, rude. I feel like I need to have some like authority in this room that like if I'm screen sharing, nobody else can screen share. But it's not. People just just kick me right off. I want to show what Drew looks like. You can figure out what room number we're in. But it is eleven, so I'm gonna get started on some of these examples. So when I'm done, then Seth, you can airplay whatever you're. Never mind. It's not that you can airplay anything classroom appropriate. To your heart's it's desire. Just, it's a little hard. Okay. I just had to. I just had to clarify. So, okay. Sign of one fifty. This is fine. This one gets used. All the tools that we already have. Sign is. Remind me which variable x or y. Y. And I'm gonna go to one fifty. What's your y at one fifty? One half. Boom. Okay. Cotangent of five pi over three. Now we gotta use a few more few more tools. It's not gonna be as straightforward as the other one. Where is five pi over three? What angle is that at? That's in my fourth quadrant. It's at 300. I just like to remind myself in case you have a hard time finding them. Cotangent, what is that in terms of X and Y? If I look at the back of my sheet, in terms of X and Y, what is cotangent? X over Y, over y. good. So I need to use the X divided by the Y at my 300 at my five pi over three. My X is one half. 
my y is negative root three over two. Okay, again, this is, I feel like the more I like physically do this, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Like I've already done this at least once today on the homework. And I think we're gonna do it at least one or two more times. Eventually you're just gonna start seeing a pattern. Like once we get to this point, you're like, oh, well, it's gonna be one over negative root three. And Miss White wants it simplified and rationalized in my unit circle form. So it's gonna be negative root three over three. If you manage to lose a negative, that's totally fine. It happens to the best of us, but it's your job to realize what quadrant we're in and whether it's positive or negative. So if I'm down here in five pi over three or 300 in the fourth quadrant, tangent and cotangent in the fourth quadrant are negative. So I just gotta make sure that negative comes with me. All right, cosecant of um, three pi over four. Um, cosecant is what in terms of X and Y? One over Y, very good. And three pi over four is which angle? Where is that at? Good, it's 135 where my S is gonna be positive, which is good because cosecant is the same thing as sine or the inverse of sine. So I'm gonna do one divided by the Y here, which is one divided by roots two over two. Again, we can think of that as one times two over roots two. And um, you know, I like to rationalize and simplify here. I kind of ran out of room, so I'm gonna bring it down here. One times two over root two is two over root two. So I have to make that two root two over two and that's too many twos. So it's just gonna be radical two. All right, let's keep going. Tan of two four, negative 240. Okay, shoot, I gotta find out where negative 240 is. You can draw a picture or you can just um, subtract. If I go negative 240 degrees, what's that in my positive angle? 120, very good. So I'm doing tan at 120. Tan is the same thing as what in terms of X and Y? y over x everyone okay with that so i gotta do my y at 120 divided by my x at 120 this is a slightly different one than the one we just did but it's the same numbers this one is actually the easier one though because my twos are going to cancel out and my root three is going to stay on top so it's going to be root three Oh, except I'm in the second quadrant, right? Don't lose your negative with your one half and don't forget that your tan has to be negative in the second quadrant. So again, you may not use every tool every time, but they're there kind of to keep you in check, checked and balanced. All right, cosine of seven pi over six. Where's that at? 210 and cosine is your X or Y? X and what's your X at 210? Negative root three over two. You don't have to write anything I write besides the answer. I just want you to like kind of see my thought process. So if you were to like look at the Zoom without the sound or look at your notes later and be like, what was she thinking? I thought about, okay, what degree is it? Am I looking at X or Y or one over whatever? And that's how I got my answer. All right, last one on this row, it says secant of five pi over four. Where's five pi over four? 225, it's in that third quadrant. Secant is what in terms of X's and Y's? One over X, good. So we're gonna do one over X at 225, which is negative root two over two. Now this is where I'm gonna argue Either you need to start finding patterns or you just will find patterns. I literally just did that a minute ago and I don't want to redo it again, right? One divided by two root two is going to be radical two. I just have to remember or I have to use my points to decide whether it's positive or negative. Do you kind of see how the cosecant above it relates to that? So now I'm going to start making a mental note or I'm going to notice the pattern. Okay, every time I have a pi over four, and I'm doing one over y or one over x, it's gonna be root two. 
I just don't know if it's gonna be negative or positive. Okay, I actually didn't get through the last four with my alpha, so I'll just kind of hold off on these. We have about three more minutes of class before you leave anyway, so good job um, with that. We'll look at this on Monday.